Hey, what's going on my friends? Mark here, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Now, if you're familiar with the custom wiring process for car audio, a lot of times we're needing to join different wires to each other. And traditionally, the best way to go about doing that is you will strip the wires, you'll twist them together, you'll solder them together, and then you protect the connection with a piece of heat shrink tubing. Now recently on social media, I started seeing something that I know it's been around for quite a while, but I haven't seen it in quite a while, and that is these guys right here. So what are these? Well, my friends, these are what are called solder and seal connectors. These come in multiple different sizes, and if we look closely, we can see that each of them has these two colored bands, one at each end. That is to make a waterproof seal, and then you can see that silver thing in the middle. Now, what is that? That little silver band in the middle is low temperature solder. At least that's what it's called according to the manufacturer. So the idea with these is now you would strip your two wires, you would push the two together, you would cover it with this, and then in one convenient step, you would heat this up with a heat gun and it's gonna shrink the heat shrink down and it's also going to melt that solder and join the wires. At least that's what's supposed to happen. I mean, let's be honest, compared to the traditional method where you join the two wires, you use a soldering iron to solder them together and then you apply heat shrink over it and then you heat shrink it down with a heat gun. If we could literally just apply this over the wires and use a heat gun, obviously that's a time savings. But, but, but I still have some questions. For instance, if we join eight or nine different conductors together, how bulky is this going to be in comparison to the traditional method? Additionally, does this quote unquote low temperature solder band actually flow into the wire and give us a good connection? Are these along with the heat gun truly a replacement for everything else? Let's find out. To get things started with comparing these two different methods, I'm going to start with the traditional method. And as you can see, I'm timing myself just to get an idea how long making one connection takes. Here we have it with the traditional method of soldering and then shrinking down the heat shrink tube. It took me about a minute and 10 seconds. I know that that seems kind of slow, but I was making sure that I did this with my normal process just to ensure that the solder completely flowed into the joint and that I had a real good connection and that everything is good and covered. I wasn't trying to rush through and I'll do the same thing when I use these I'm not trying to rush I'm just trying to get an accurate estimate of time for how long this takes next up here I repeated this process but this time I'm using the solder and shrink connection and I did my best to keep both of the processes as similar as possible with my timing so uh, yeah, that took a minute and 15 seconds, which is obviously about five seconds longer. So why did this take a little bit longer? If you look to the left and to the right of the solder band, when you're heating this up, you have to watch through the clear heat shrink and you have to watch for the solder to start actually flowing into the wire. Now, just so you guys know, I didn't stop with the heat gun until I saw that this was really flowing around the wire. And even with waiting until that point, you can see that we didn't exactly get 100% coverage. I'm gonna actually try this again, and I wanna see if I'm not against the clock and in a rush. I wanna see if I can get that solder to completely cover the wire. So about the same results here. I'm going to try again, but this time I'm gonna strip less of the insulation away. Maybe that way there's less wire that the solder needs to cover. Something like this, I've stripped away much less. It's really only the band that's covering the wire. Let's see what happens. I'm definitely more happy with the results on that one. I can't see any of the bare wire anymore. And just for reference, this is still taking me about a minute and 15 seconds to a minute and 25 seconds to do when you include pushing the wires together and covering them with the tubing. Now I am going to cut these in half because I wanna get an idea how much penetration we have with the solder into the wire. We'll get to that in a second, but in the meantime, I do wanna connect each of these connectors on the nine conductor cable, which is something we would commonly use in custom car audio. I'm gonna do it using the solder and seal connectors because I want to see how bulky this is going to be. Now, while you guys are watching the time lapse of me putting that nine conductor harness together, I want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, you. You guys out there that have been rocking the car audio fabrication grit t-shirt. 
If you guys didn't know, I recently teamed up with a company called Teespring to handle the shipment of my t-shirts. So if you guys are interested in supporting the show, rocking a t-shirt, I'd really appreciate it. There's t-shirts, there's also hoodies, and there's long sleeve shirts. You can actually click the links directly down below the video. And if you don't see them there, I'll put links for you guys down in the video description. It really means the world to me. And I'm totally humbled by the fact that you guys want to rock these shirts and help support the show. It really does help me with the making of more of these videos. So if you like the show and if you want to show your support, you know I'd appreciate it. So update here, I've got all the wires completely connected and made into the harness. I actually had some trouble doing this. It was a lot more difficult than the traditional process. How so? Well, because the wires aren't actually physically attached to each other by solder, when you go to put the heat shrink tube over them and you're trying to kind of hold it while you're heating it up with the heat gun, it's really kind of a pain because the wires can easily kind of pull apart until the point that you get that shrink shrunk down on. Now that's just my opinion. I'm sure through practice I could probably improve that process and do it a little bit better but the other issue that I had is I kind of had to do one at a time in order to make sure that it was getting fully melted into the wires I did try doing a couple at a time and it was hard to kind of spin the bundle around and make sure that you know everything was getting heated evenly and I also found that I have to heat it so much that this wire actually started to get onto the verge of of the insulation on the wire melting itself. I think what it's all gonna boil down to here is I'm going to cut these guys in half and I wanna see, you know, this is our original traditional method. I wanna compare the penetration with that to these. To cut these nice and clean, I'm using these robust cable cutters. And as a quick side note, I absolutely love these cutters. They work really good for cutting zero gauge and other large wire. I'll drop a link to them down in the video description. Let's take an up close look at the cross section of these. This is the traditional sample. And if you can look really closely, I'm trying to hold the camera still, there's really good penetration with the solder. It's actually, if you look close, it just looks like a cut piece of metal. It's very difficult to even see the individual strands of copper from the wire. Next here, I have the sample where I didn't strip away as much insulation. And actually, I'm pretty impressed with this. This looks about the same as that first sample there. We have really good penetration on the solder, but I will say that there are a couple of individual strands of wire that I can see. And then we have the final cross section here. This is where I stripped away a normal amount of material, which made it much more manageable to actually join the wires together. But if you look closely, you can see that there's much more individual wire strands. So we didn't get 100% penetration. So what is my final opinion on these? Well, on the positive side, we were able to get good penetration with that low temperature solder if we didn't strip away much insulation. But the only issue with that is it definitely makes it much more difficult to kind of get the wires to stick together. And if you think about it, then you don't have as long of a section of wire that is joined together. Another thing is one of the things in car audio that you're most likely going to be combining together is probably a wiring harness where you're going to have at least eight Eight different speaker leads and you know to work in like a tight space and connect all of these different wires together it would definitely be a little bit more on the challenging side in comparison to the traditional methods now with that said if you are working in a confined space let's say you're attaching a wire to another wire you know you want to solder it and it's hard to actually get the soldering iron back in there maybe these would be beneficial because you know, obviously you don't have to worry about getting the soldering iron in there, but you do still have to heat them up with a heat gun. So it would have to be in an area that you're not gonna accidentally melt anything on the vehicle with the heat gun. So I think what the question kind of boils down to and what I was most excited about these for is I thought it might be a good solution for those of you out there that don't have a lot of tools, don't have a soldering iron, but I actually brought this up to some of my good friends that aren't car audio guys, but they're familiar with, with soldering irons and what they're for and heat shrink tubing. They're actually engineers and they brought up a good point that if you don't have a soldering iron odds are you probably don't have a good heat gun either so with that said I think the final thing that you guys will want to take into account is the price on these when I picked these up I got them for about a quarter a piece they're definitely a little bit more expensive I'm sure that you guys can find them for less somewhere else or possibly even more 
but this is a more pricey connector. And if you guys are serious about car audio and making lots of connections, in my opinion, it would be in your best interest to get an entry level soldering iron. And then you have something that's much more effective for the traditional technique. Don't forget, if you'd like to show the world that you love custom car audio fabrication, consider picking up a shirt. And a special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Billy, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys. More videos coming soon. Thank you, my friend, for watching.